1999 to 2012, 2007, she put together a 24-0 record, 21 KOs, captured some world titles along the way, and now she is here in the Hall of Fame. And all you have to do is say the name Ali, Layla. You're, you're, of course, you're going to be at the banquet tonight, the induction tomorrow, but so far, talk about what this means to you. Well, it really is an honor um, to be recognized along with so many other amazing fighters and my father as well. And it brought back so many memories to come here because I actually had my pro debut at Turning Stone Casino, fought Jackie Frazier at the Turning Stone Casino. And it seems like a lifetime ago now, right? With everything that I'm doing now, outside of boxing, my family, my children. So it's really been fun to um, immerse them in all this as well and to spend time with boxing fans that I know love my father and love boxing so much. By the way, if you have a question for Layla Ali, please come up. And also, again, for those making noise over there on the right, please be quiet. And let's uh, get this lecture underway before I get truculent. Remember your dad <laughs> at that time? You know, when you came into boxing, a lot of people thought that it might be a novelty. But I knew when I talked to you, spoke to you, and looked into your eyes, this was not a novelty. Well, I mean, women's boxing, number one, just wasn't even as popular as it is now. Um, it has a long way to go still, but it's come very far. But before me, it was uh, Christy Martin was the only woman that had really been promoted, but women have been fighting for so many years. So people just really didn't understand why I wanted to do it. They felt like, oh, you're so pretty. Why don't you be a model? Why don't you be some, something else? You know, so they thought that she couldn't possibly want to fight. So, of course, many years later, I was still fighting, and then people started to take it more seriously. But, um, you know, you also had, I don't know if people realize, there was a lot of other famous daughters as well. You know, you had Jackie Frazier, you had George Foreman's daughter, Inga Warrior Hansen's daughter, Archie Moore's daughter, Roberto Duran's granddaughter. Um, I may be leaving somebody out, but um, there were many other daughters that didn't quite stay in it. So I think during that time, it just kind of felt that way, that maybe it was just for publicity, but obviously for me it wasn't. Obviously, you come from some pretty good genetics, uh, some pretty good genes, but when was the first time you actually put on a pair of boxing gloves? And who was the first one that really worked with you inside the gym to develop the skills that you had? So the first time that I fought, you mean put on gloves? Uh, yeah. yeah. That was when I decided, well, I saw Christy Martin fighting on Mike Tyson's undercard. And that is when I first had the idea to become a boxer myself. I didn't know who she was. I didn't know who Deidre Godfrey was, who she was fighting. But I was like, oh my God. Because I had been fighting, which is not professional. Yeah. Yeah. But um, so for me to be able to go to the gym, so it took me about a year to, of contemplation because I understood how tough it would be, how much pressure would be on me. I wasn't an athlete. I never participated in sports. So I knew that my father wasn't going to like it. So it took me a year. Um, and then I was around. I would say 18, 18, almost 19, when I actually went to the boxing gym. My first trainer was Doug Huntley, um, and oh no, actually Kevin, Kevin Morgan, then Doug Huntley, then Roger um, Mayweather, then Floyd Mayweather, then Buddy McGirt. So I had the opportunity to train some great trainers as well. When did you realize, though, that you actually had the right stuff? Because there's so much pressure having that last name. And, and it had, to, so it's two part, the pressure of being Ali, and it, when did you know, him? I got it. I, well, I knew that I was strong, I knew that I was tough, I knew that I had heart, but I didn't know if I had the skill, I would have the skill. So that's why I started going to the gym, kind of training in secrecy. Um, I didn't tell anybody I was thinking about becoming a professional fighter. And I, it took time, you know, it took time. And of course, I would ask my trainer, do you think I have what it takes? Because I, I knew that I wanted to be a champion. I didn't want to just be a fighter. So um, it took probably about six months um, to really just fall in love with the sport. And, you know, you start sparring, that's when you really have to get in there. When you get that first, you get cracked that first time, that's when you know you're going to want to turn your back and get out the ring. Or you'll get mad and want to, you know, get, get the person back. So I've always been a fighter, but the skill just kind of, of course, took time to grow. And it didn't even get to the place I wanted to be. I mean, it took many, it takes many years. But yeah, no, it was, it was natural from the very beginning. Does anybody have a question? If you do, please come right up here. 
And before we, we go to you, I said at the end, because I called some of your fights, including the Christy Martin fight, and a lot of people, I don't think you actually had even reached your peak. I think you were still getting a little bit Absolutely. better even at the end, if you can speak to that. Absolutely. Well, the Christy Martin fight definitely wouldn't be a good fight to watch um, in terms of skill, because I totally went in there. I had this attitude like she was way too small to be in here. Like it was kind of like all in fun for me. And my outfit didn't show up. I was mad. I was like, I was trying to knock her out in that first round, which didn't happen. Because when you try to knock someone out, it just doesn't happen. So um, yeah, but that that's not going to be the best fight to watch. But um, what was the question? I forgot. Oh yeah, no, no, absolutely. I mean, I only boxed for 10 years. You think of that, that's some people's amateur career. So. You know, I, I definitely could have gone much further, and any time I fought, even though I would knock somebody out and win, I would go back, watch the tape, and look at how much I didn't do the things that I wanted to do, you know what I mean? So, but that's just part of being an athlete and an elite athlete is always trying to improve, so there definitely was room for improvement, of course. Well, I guess I got actually two questions. The first one is, on Friday night fights and whatnot, you railed over the fact that they only gave you two minutes to round to fight. Uh, maybe you were one not many. Why do you think there's such resistance to upping the round numbers uh, for women's fights as well as uh, upping uh, from two minutes to three minutes? I don't really know why there's resistance, I would say, but I know that it just doesn't make any sense. There's no reason that um, women shouldn't be fighting three minutes. You're fighting women, you're not fighting men. We're capable of being in shape, obviously. So I think that sometimes rules get made and, and it's, hard, it's hard for people to, to you know, change their mind about the way it should have been. I think it's gonna happen, definitely. I think the more people put the pressure on and there's really no reason for it, then it's gonna happen. It will. And my other question is, uh, your nephew's now boxing. Have you given him any uh, advice, any pointers? So, me and my nephew, I have nothing to do with his boxing career, and I've told him whatever he wants to reach out for advice, I'm here, but he hasn't reached out for any advice. Yeah. Uh, how are you? I. Uh... I'm not even sure you were alive because I'm a little older than you. I actually got to meet your dad up at his training camp in Pennsylvania when he was training for the Thrill in Manila uh, with Joe Frazier. That's amazing. And um, when they announced, you know, when you just mentioned you made your pro debut against his daughter, and for those of us on the outside looking in, that obviously seemed like a publicity stunt when it was first announced, but I'm wondering how long were you seriously training before that happened, before that fight came around? So I had already turned pro, I was already fighting, Jackie turned pro, and we are in the same weight class, so it was only right that we would fight. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty silly a lot of times when people come up with these ideas. We're two professional fighters, of course we're going to fight each other, and in boxing, as we know, anytime you can get more publicity for a fight, people are going to do that. You know, but when we got into the ring, it was a real scrap. We both didn't have a whole lot of skill, we didn't, both didn't have a whole lot of experience, but we were dead ass serious. And that's something that nobody can deny. Anybody who was there, anybody that saw it on television, there was a lot of family history there. So sometimes you can't worry about what the public says, what the fans say, because you're not in the gym training with us. You don't know what's in our mind. All you can do is get in the ring and put on a good show, and that's what we did. And by the way, I had like 102 fever that fight. And I still fought because I said, you know what, this is going to be easy. And it didn't turn out to be easy. And it was a scrap. And I, you know, I didn't even sit down in between rounds because if I sat down, I wasn't going to be able to get back up. So, but I never made that public back then. But I was like on death's door for that fight. It was tough. It was a real tough fight. You know, I, I teared up. Thank you. I teared up recently watching. How many of you saw the, the Ken Burns documentary? on Muhammad Ali recently, I yeah. I teared up because some footage came out of me walking up the stair, going to the gym and walking up the stairs. I was like 11 years old, same height as I am now, but uh, anyway. But you, you know, interesting, uh, you actually were born, I think, in Miami, is that correct? Miami Beach, Florida. Talk about the, the your earliest memories with your father, just some memories when you were coming up as a uh, little Layla with Muhammad Ali. 
Well, you know, there wasn't a lot of private time with my father because he always had people around. He loved to entertain. Our home was like a public place. Um, anytime you came downstairs, there was, you know, um, just a little bit of everything. Other celebrities, fans, you know, they call the guard gate. He's like, let them in. You know, people just be there all the time. But that's what I remember. I remember my father's kindness. I remember that he was a people person. I remember that he was passionate about the things that he believed in, you know, his humanitarian work. He always had the news on in the background and a cup of coffee on the table, and he'd be answering his phone and taking business calls. But, um, you know, he really cared, like I said, about people, and his kindness just was what stood out to me the most. And then he would also teach us why he was so kind and why he took time with people. So that was really important, and he was very intentional about that. Hey, well, congratulations. I saw that a week 20 years ago, and it was an excellent non-stop action fight. So it was a real fight, and I enjoyed it. Um, can you talk a little bit about what your family life is like now? Just touch briefly for me on the little controversy with your mic close to your mouth. Oh, uh, can you talk a little bit about your daily life now? And a little bit of the controversy first as Shields is trying to get you out of retirement. And by the way, you, can you introduce that young man to the audience today? That gentleman right there behind me. Oh, that's why he's not with you. Oh, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> you got a lot of questions, huh? Yeah. All up in the business, no, I'm playing. No, I'm just messing with you. But thank, thank you, thank you for your kind remarks. Um, daily life of my mom. You know, I have an 11-year-old, I have a 13-year-old, I have a husband. Um, I have a lifestyle brand. And, um, you know, she I, can cook, too. <laughs> I've done a lot of things, obviously, outside of I was an entrepreneur before I started boxing. I had a nail salon when I was 18 years old, and um, I kind of went back to that. Um, so I have a very full um, life. My family definitely comes first to me. Um, as far as, thank you, Clarissa, I mean, she's one of the current boxers. She's, she's doing an amazing job, and there really isn't anything there to say. I'm 44 years old. I'm not really... Um, it, I'm not really um, interested in returning to the sport of boxing. Um, and I wish all the girls well that are having the opportunities that are there for them because of women who paved the way before them. You know, and they have so many tools now that they can use with social media. You know, we didn't have that back then. Um, so I'm always available. I've always said, I've said it to Clarissa. When we were, when we used to get along, um, you know, you ever need anything? You know, I'm there. You want the information? I'm talking about business information because that's one thing I know. You know, whether you respect me in the ring or not, doesn't really matter to me. But um, in terms of business, um, you know, I'm there for the ladies, and I've told all of them. I mean, Katie Taylor, I'm a, I'm a fan of Katie. You know, Amanda, all of them. They all know that they can always reach out because I do do a whole lot of other things outside of boxing, but I'm definitely am there to support others along the way. Beautiful. And this question is, if you were still in boxing, do you like to train younger kids? You know, even if I wasn't, the thing is, is that I've never been interested in training. You know, I've never been interested in promoting. I'm not really interested in the business of boxing altogether. Um, and I think that, you know, like my father wasn't. You know, my father was the greatest, but he never trained anybody. I like to do it, but I didn't, I didn't want to train. Training takes, is a special skill, it takes a lot of patience, and you can be good at doing something yourself, but not necessarily good at teaching someone else how to do it. I know my lane, that's not it. I'm definitely not patient enough to train someone day in and day out. Um, and, but I, like I said, I'm always there to give advice and or consult. I, I could do, but I couldn't really do it for a long period of time. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, despite that being it? A, <laughs> that it? Okay, thank just, you. Thank so, you. Despite being an Ali, uh, you fought to me like you had a chip on your, your shoulder. Because, you know, there was a talk of a, of a, of a Layla Ali and Wolf fight uh, right at the end of your career. And, and everybody. Oh, that was all throughout my career, not at the yeah, end. Yeah, right, right. And, and it never came to fruition, not her fault. To, not, I don't know if it was anybody's fault. But, you know, I thought it would have been an, an even, very even matchup. I would have 
I was asked one time who would I have made the favorite, and, and I called Ann Wolf's fight Yvonne DeWard. And I know, and I know how massive of a puncher, but I would have given a slight edge um, to Layla just because of tenacity. And I said, she always seemed, and they both did, but you always had a chip on your shoulder. Where did that chip come from? You think I have a chip on my shoulder. Doesn't mean I actually had one on my shoulder. <laughs> but I mean, I'm, I'm a dog in the ring. And the thing is, is that I don't look like one. So people will hold that against me. Not never have you ever seen me get my ass whooped in the ring or get given a fight or get knocked out or look like I was about to go. Hasn't happened in the ring, hasn't happened in the gym. And, you know, I think that the hardest thing about my career was the weight class that I was in, you know, at 168. And I'm a lean, strong 168, right? I'm 205 pounds right now. Okay? So, I don't, I don't, I don't look like... No, she's actually 6'4", because I'm not that short. But I'm saying, I'm a big chick. And a lot of people don't realize that, and they didn't realize the power that I had, and I was the type of person to come in the ring and try to just knock you out. You know, I, I would use my speed, I would use all of that, I could take a punch, and then I would get people hurt. I used to call it the beat down, it's like the ref stops the fight, that's fine with me too, as long as we go home early. But at 168, unfortunately, a lot of the girls were just overweight. They should have came down. I told Clarissa when she started fighting, you shouldn't be at 168. You need to lean all that out. You need to go get a nutritionist and you need to get in a weight class where you can have power and actually knock people out, right? And stop them. So the thing is, is that that was the, the hard thing in our weight class. There wasn't that much, there wasn't that many girls, right? And the girls that were in the weight class didn't want to fight each other. You had Natasha Rogacina. You had, um, what's her name? Oh, he's, he's gone. Um, you had you had B, you had Ann Wolf, and you had Letitia Robinson. Undefeated, why are they fighting each other? Yeah. If it was me, if I'm the problem, why aren't they fighting each other? So I'm just happy that women's boxing has got to a place where the champions are really fighting each other and you're gonna be able to see. So you can see a Taylor Serrano fight, because that's the fights that the, the, the public wants to see. Thank you, thank you. Nobody wants to see you get there with someone who they know is gonna be an easy fight. That's not fun for me, it's not fun for them, but when you're a world champion, you have to defeat, you have to defend your titles. I remember when I fought at Madison Square Garden and there was a girl named Joma Bojanin, and I wanted to fight her. She's a big, tall girl, she was strong, she wouldn't, she wouldn't take the fight. And then she came to the fight afterwards and complained that the contract was too big. She wasn't making enough money. I'm like, I'm not making any money either. You know what I mean? So I wasn't making a lot of money in boxing. What What does it mean to you, though, with all that you've uh, been through it to become a legit Hall of Famer? What does that mean to you? It feels good. I mean, obviously, because, um, you know, and even now, there's probably people in this audience that she can't fight. She didn't fight anybody. Who are her opponents? I can't help who was available for me to fight. I can't help when someone won't get in the ring with me. I can't do that. So, you know, it it's definitely feels good. Um, you know, like I said, all the other daughters that fought, they thought it was a publicity stunt. They're not all here. I really worked hard. I worked as hard as I could. I surrounded myself with the best team, the best trainers, and did what I could. So it, it feels good to be recognized and be in the Hall of Fame with my father as well. And what do you think your father, perfect segue, what do you think your father would be thinking and is thinking right now looking up? down on you. I think he's very proud. I mean, a lot of, I mean, my father, when he first heard that I was boxing, basically said, I don't want you to do it. It's not for you. It's not for women. It's too tough. Do you realize how hard this is going to be? Do you realize everybody's going to fight you 10 times harder? Do you realize what will happen if you ever get knocked down or get knocked? He went through every negative thing that happened and said, don't do it. And I said, dad, I've already made my mind up. And I'm that one, so there's seven of us, seven seven girls, I'm the youngest. So here's the baby, right? And it's always defied him, so he wasn't surprised. <laughs> I've always been that one. And I said, I'm gonna do it anyway, Dad, so you're either gonna have to um, respect it or not. And of course he did, he came back, he, he was there, he was at my fights, he was at my pro debut, and he came to me and he said, I'm sorry, I was wrong. You know, when I won my first title, he said, I'm sorry. I was wrong, I apologize. I started crying. You know, he's very sensitive. He started crying. We started crying together. He said, I was wrong. Women can fight, you can fight, and I'm proud of you. 
And that was an amazing feeling because I had built up this armor, like, I don't care what he thinks, I'm gonna do this, and, you know, I had to, I had to go. Because you have to think, 18, 19 years old, you remember yourself when you were that young, and you're doing something for the first time that I had no exposure to, and I did it on my own. My dad didn't take my hand and take me to the gym. I, I made some mistakes and who I chose first, but that's okay, I learned. And the greatest of all time, AKA my dad, is telling me, don't do it, you can't do it, it's not for you, I don't want you to do it, and I did it anyway. And with the world, you know, the negative attention. So he's very proud that I didn't listen to him. I, I, I interviewed. Thank you. Yeah, I interviewed Layla in the ring after the Christy Barton fight, and Muhammad was in the ring, and I saw that you, you, you certainly have made him proud. And it, finally, how does Layla Ali want to be remembered as a prize fighter, and more importantly, as a woman? Well, I think that when I think of myself, I think of confidence, and I think of perseverance, and um, you know, just I strive for excellence. That's really that's really what it is. As a fighter. Um, you know, for me, I'm always, I was all, I'm always going to find a way to win, no matter who I'll never be in the ring with, you know, and um, like I said, there's been some really tough fights. What made them tough was my health, you know. Um, people don't realize all the time what's going on in the background, you know, being in a, a relationship that wasn't so great, still getting in there, fighting, fighting with the flu a couple of times. I remember, um, you know, just watching fights back, like, oh God, that was horrible, I won. But the public didn't realize that I didn't have temperature, I was sick a lot, you know, it was just crazy. Um, so, like I said, I think that, I haven't really, you know, so that's a tough question, um, because, you know, you don't really think of yourself, like, oh, how do I want to be remembered? But I just want to be recognized for the work that I put in, for the, the um, you know, the part that I had, I guess, in, in where the sport is today, you know, and just be here to help other fighters coming along that, may not um, have the information that they need to take things to the next level. We love boxing, but it doesn't necessarily love us back. And what I mean by that is it's a dangerous sport. You know, you have people who fought and might have been champions and who aren't doing well in their life right now, might not even know where their next meal is coming from. And it's really important that, you know, people have the information that they need to to do something with the, after they're done with their boxing career. You know, so, um, because this doesn't last Forever, it absolutely doesn't. So, and it's you know you have to be intentional about setting things up for yourself in the future. She be beautiful. She be stinging. She's Layla Ali, Hall of Famer, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up. One more thing. Sorry. One more thing. I just want to thank all of you all for coming out. Um, so many passionate boxing fans, no matter whether you came to see me or just be here or whoever see your, your favorite fighters, I really see the passion in your eyes. And I swear to God, I wish that I could stand there and sign every single autograph. But a lot of times people come up to you when you're walking or when you're with your family or when you're, you know, and so I'm not able to get everybody, but we are going to set some time aside. I signed over there this morning. I signed yesterday. You know, I feel bad, I really do, when it comes to that last person, but I'm not gonna be able to do everybody, but I'm going to sign some autographs while I'm here, but we just have to do it in a controlled way, okay? Love so, you, love you. All right, thank you. Thank you so much for watching this video, and make sure to subscribe for more videos of your favorite fighters over here on Fight Up TV, and give us a follow online as well, at Fight Up TV, on Twitter, and on Instagram. We appreciate it, guys.